When you play a game on a regular monitor, all of your memories of that game are limited to the confines of that screen. Memories created in 60fps with a 16x9 border and a 2D perspective. It's all blasted into reality with VR. Memories created are indistinguishable from the ones you create on a daily basis. Suddenly your first kiss and your first diamond are stored in the same way. And I would have the VR headset on, I'd be playing in my swivel chair, turning around, I running, and I had this really weird sense where there were times that I would remember that not as I was playing a game, but I remembered being there. I remembered like being in that cavern and breaking through into uh, into a raining sky, or I uh, you know having the creeper run up behind me. And it was not the sense that I remembered playing a video game. I remembered being there. VR's current trajectory has a lot of high interaction standing experiences on the horizon such as Boneworks or Half-Life Alex, but there's a growing player base interested in a more traditional approach. All the same exact methods of interaction we've had for 10 plus years, only upgraded by the headset itself. Is the visual experience of VR significant enough to warrant use over traditional viewing methods? Well... Tetris master Trey Harrison demoed the latest release of Tetris, Tetris Effect, back in 2018. His performance was expert level, as it always is, but it didn't live up to the insane plays we'd seen him do previously. Oh lordy. Oh, how, how dare you. <laughs> the Tetris. With the dirty Tetris. Boom, Tetris for Trey. And cleans it up. Dirtiest Tetris alive. It was good gameplay nevertheless, but as the demo came to an end, Trey said something that nobody expected him to. Are we gonna have time to do the VR one? Now, I'm going to let the video play on from this point. It's too interesting not to see what happens. If you want to see the full video without my edits, there will be a link in the description. Now, to be honest, it actually had not occurred to me that a hardcore classic Tetris guy would even be interested in the VR experience of Tetris Effect. It was about as far from a traditional Tetris experience as you could possibly get. But the more I thought about it, the more I was actually kind of excited to see how Trey would react to VR Tetris. So we, we got it set up. Now, as Trey began playing Tetris Effect in virtual reality, which, by the way, was his first experience using PlayStation VR, uh, something really fascinating started happening. He started doing even better at the game. That's true. It's going a little faster. Oh, actually, you know what? The latency in those goggles is so much lower than the uh, TV. That's probably a big part of it. His increased level of play was mostly attributed to a low latency display. So it didn't seem to explain how Trey was almost more concentrated. He was more involved in the game. He snapped to position like he's playing an actual tournament. This is some, this is some high level Tetris. Right yeah, now. yeah, he's going for the full. He's going for the full 16. Oh shit, he's gonna get it. Any line, any line will do. Wow, I've never heard this before, ever. <laughs> this sound? Literally. <laughs> Side note. In Tetris, the highest scoring single move is called a Tetris. It's clearing four lines simultaneously, but the latest release allowed you to quadruple this number and go for a 16 line or more clear. Up until Trey played the VR version of Tetris, there was no recorded gameplay of anyone achieving this 16-line clearance. It may have been done by the developers, but nobody had ever even heard about it. Trey broke the world record for Tetris clears, and he did it in VR. We did it. We got yeah, the coveted Deca Hexadris. Wow. I can, we can stop now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Trey took off his headset, we said our goodbyes, and, and we left. The next day, I kept thinking about why Trey's performance had improved so drastically in virtual reality. I mean, there's the lower latency of the VR headset, of course, but the more I thought about it, the more I felt like that was only a small piece of the explanation. As I thought about it more, I realized that in hindsight, all of my favorite virtual reality experiences so far have kind of been versions of the same thing. Games like Thumper, where instead of using the VR headset to put you in some elaborate 3D space where you have to crane your neck all over the place to look at things, they, they instead just kind of use the VR headset as headphones for your eyes. There's a concept in psychology that groups our cognitive processes into two categories, controlled processes and automatic processes. 
An automatic process is anything from touching a fire and learning it burns to holding a cup in your hand and slowly learning the complex shape, where to put your hand, the individual pressures required to sturdily hold the cup. You don't think about it, but you do think about it. A controlled process is more simply anything that you actively do, like driving a car, Although the line between automatic and controlled is often blurred, even when driving a car, some processes like keeping speed with the car in front of you may still be automatic. While an automatic process might seem simple, they're often argued as much more complex than normally appreciated. After all, they make up a large part of the way we interact with the world. While learning to walk would definitely be a controlled process, walking as a 19-year-old is mostly automatic. Although it's perceived simplicity, keeping balance while walking is a lot of very complex calculations. Think about how long it took us to make a robot that can walk by itself. Or as lecturer Ellen Friedland puts it, there's a whole range of properties highlighted by the existing psychological literature that makes automaticity a much more complex phenomenon than is usually appreciated. See, the interesting thing about an automatic process is how it changes and adapts. I've learned for pretty much my entire life that if something hits me, it's gonna hurt. So surely when I see a video of a train hurtling towards me, I should have those exact same automatic processes activated and think, get the F out of there. And I may well do. I may react in that exact way if I were a child. But adults have already built two separate automatic processes so that we can differentiate between real danger and TV danger. See? <laughs> This is why children are so much more prone to things like scary movies and big sharp teeth on the screen or they might feel a little bit more queasy when watching a gory movie. Their little tiny brains actually treat the images as if they're real. But this isn't about age. This is about... Knowledge. There's a very famous old film known as Arrival of a Train. Quite simply, a train would come towards the screen. Members of the audience who were fully grown adults were reported to have looked on in fear. There's even an urban legend that says that members would even run to the back of the room to escape the oncoming train. Whether this is true or not though is unknown. But my awesome adult brain cannot be tricked. I've built up a proper set of automatic processes so I can differentiate things. <laughs> I'm scared of the underwater. A cavernous expanse of nothingness. What could be lurking in the foggy shadows of the depths? My imagination goes wild with fear. While some movies and video games manage to loosely emulate this feeling, nothing hits it for me like the real thing. But for some reason, in VR... This shit cuts me to my core. Like all of my worst fears are realized right in front of me. Everything your brain uses to differentiate between real and virtual vision are stripped away when you put this headset on. No more flat 2D images, no more 16x9 border, no more HUD. If I'm going all out, no more controllers, no more sitting down. In fact, what I'm experiencing at this point is closer to real life than it is virtual. Because of this, my brain uses the automatic processes used in real life over the processes used in gaming. I'm no longer differentiating the images I see between virtual and real. I'm comprehending this experience as if it was real. This explains why even the most tough, hardened horror players will jump into a VR horror game and piss themselves in seconds. Why putting your head through an object is so daunting the first time. Why you feel vertigo when you look off high edges. Why you feel the same anxiety from Skyrim people looking at you as you do real people looking at you. Why talking to someone in VR feels almost intimate. Why Trey Harrison played so well in Tetris. Why John Carmack remembered Minecraft like it was a real life event.
Wow, that's cool. That's fucking cool, isn't it? That's cool. Wow. Our brain actually is processing VR closer to the way it's processing the real world than it is the virtual one. That's why our memories and experiences are so much more kind of visceral and realistic and believable. And the memories we create are just so similar to the normal everyday memories. But this does come with a hitch though. In fact, so much of a hitch, I'm gonna make the lighting red. Obviously, a child eventually learns to differentiate between real images and virtual ones, so surely we will too eventually. Like the audience members of Arrival of a Train, one day we will learn to differentiate those two images. In fact, players who've had their headsets for a few years are already talking about this. Motion sickness doesn't bother them at all, horror games are just as dull as normal horror games, heights are nothing, being shot at isn't shocking, it's just like a video game. The first time I stabbed someone in Blade and Sorcery, there was like this odd chill that ran down my spine, like I'd done something genuinely morally wrong. I mean, now I, I jump on people and I bash them in the skull. There is absolutely no remorse. I don't feel anything for those fuckers. What's happened is my brain has created a third automatic process, one for VR. It notices when there's a bit of extra weight on my face, maybe when my FOV is a little smaller. Maybe it notices when I can feel my hands holding the controllers. Either way, my brain has learned this third process now. It's able to differentiate real from virtual from old virtual. So sadly, if you're new to VR and you're really enjoying that, oh my god, everything is real feeling, it might pass as time goes. But for me, that's just fine. I don't need this shit to be real to enjoy it. In fact, I didn't really enjoy it when it was real. I'd like to play Blade and Sorcery without having PTSD. Well, here we are. Caught in between what has been, what will be, and what is happening. It makes one, one wonder- second, Leo. I'm on the phone. Oh, sorry. It's fine. Hello. Yes, this is I. Yes, I have. What about it? Leo, they're talking about Skillshare. The online learning community? Yeah. It's talking about how drawing and writing classes can be a great way to help manage stress. It said all of that? Right. Apparently the first 1,000 Disrupt members get two months free. Good deal. Okay. Goodbye now. What in the flying fudge biscuit was that? <laughs> Not sure. Could just be the wind. What were you saying? Oh, I was saying sometimes it feels like we are in a commercial. Hey everyone, Disrupt. My name's Kira and I make YouTube videos. I've kind of invaded this channel. I'm not gonna stick around for too long. I'm not wasting any of your time. Just telling you, if you guys liked this video, you wanna see a bunch of more videos, I got loads of them. I got a bunch, you can pick from them, they're free. But yeah, goodbye Disrupt people. Hope to see you again sometime later.